Yes. All right, welcome back. Season five of House of Cards finds Kevin Spacey's President Underwood fighting tooth and nail for re-election while fending off an investigation into his deadly past. And despite the political sharks closing in, Frank is still up to some shady business in the White House. Take a look. Maine, Wisconsin, and New Hampshire are still in play. All three. I believe in you, Congressman. Do you want to know why? Tell me. Because I trust ambition. So this is a straight-up bribe? Oh, no, Congressman. A bribe is something you can refuse. Godfather <laughs> Underwood. Nice to see you. Thank you, thank you. He's rough, this guy. Before we get to the season, yeah. did you ever imagine that there would come a time in real-life politics that would make the plot lines of your show seem tame? Actually, no, I don't think they seem tame. I actually think that, that maybe a couple of seasons ago, even at the end of last season, there might have been some things that we did where people thought, well, that's just crazy. That couldn't possibly happen. And now? Season. And now, 18 <laughs> months later, I think people are, are feeling like, wow, it is possible. Has what's happened in, in Washington forced you to change course at all on the show? No, we've always felt like as long as we're true to our story, as long as we follow the runway we want to be on, and, you know, we are an alternative reality as opposed to reality television. Um, and I think that as long as we do that and don't feel the need to compete with the real world, we're, we're, we're going to be fine. When I watch the show, it's clear to me you still love playing Frank Underwood. Oh, it's a, Why? Why did he get under your skin this way? Well, because I keep learning things about him and because he keeps changing and growing and moving and, and his... Uh, his, you know, need to stay in power um, is really kind of remarkable to see how he maneuvers everyone around him. And he's sort of like a great chess master. He's about 17 moves ahead of everybody. And, and at the moment, as we catch up with him in this season, and again, the season picks up just shortly after the last one ended off, desperate? Is that, is that kind of a good way to describe the state of affairs for him? Or is he always a bit desperate? I don't think Frank Underwood ever gets desperate. He just gets even. And so he's about, he, and by the way, he's about, he and, and his wife are trying to perhaps even bring the country to war, and for the reason of? Well, because there is a, a notion in politics, world politics, history of politics, that you can use fear uh, in which to keep people in place or make them vote in a certain way. Well, but also to distract people from other things going on, you, you create something over here on the side. Exactly. You did something recently, and I saw the pictures, and I think I want to put some of them up. You had Pete Souza, who mm. we all know as President Obama's official White House photographer, go out and shoot some pictures of you on the streets in campaign mode, yeah. in character. What's yeah. it like to take Frank out on the streets, so to speak? Well, the, first of all, he also was Reagan's uh, uh, photographer. But the most incredible thing about about uh, this day, which we did on Monday, and also we went out with Doug Stamper, Michael Kelly, the actor who plays Doug. Uh, it, it was almost, first of all, like being on a campaign trail. I felt like we were really running for office. And secondarily, about 97% of the people who stopped me on the street called me Mr. President. Do they really? Yeah, they really You did. like that? I, I just thought it was sort of very interesting. They didn't say Kevin. They said Mr. President. What could be better than that? Um, you're also doing a couple other things, and I want to mention one in particular because I find it fascinating. You're doing a one-man show. Yes. It's called Darrow. Yeah. It's about the famed attorney, Clarence Darrow, and you're doing it locally here. Talk to me about what it was about that story that got you. Well, uh, he's one of the most remarkable figures in American history history. He's the reason we have the eight-hour day. He was a great labor attorney. He then was an incredible civil rights attorney and ultimately late in life became uh, a criminal defense attorney. So Leopold and Loeb case, the Scopes Monkey Trial, which is about the teaching of evolution, which they made into the great film Inherit the Wind. So we're going to do it at Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is where they normally do the U.S. Open. And uh, Exactly. And reading between the lines here, you're saving some of the seats during that performance for acting students. That's I know right. you've taught acting in the past, yeah. but you want them to be able to have well, kind of a real life come. lesson. So, so we're offering uh, to, to 18 to 25 year olds free tickets, which they can get through KevinSpaceyFoundation.com and Ticketmasters where all the rest of the tickets are being sold. And look, we're not going to sell out the whole stadium. We're, you know, it's 25,000 people. So it's actually going to feel remarkably intimate. We'll, we'll probably play to about 5,000 people. We're bringing 600 seats onto the court. And I like the fact that I can say it's Clarence Darrow on court. Perfect. It's a good, good tagline. It's great. By the way, hosting the Tonys. Yes. You've been practicing opening envelopes so you don't have one of those moments. 
I was going to ask you to present the last no. award. <laughs> no. No. I'll go. Here, Savannah, read this. <laughs> <laughs> Faye, it's all yours. Thanks. Kevin Spacey. Nice to Always see you. Always good to see you, Thank pal. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks so much. House of Cards returns on Netflix. That's on May 30th. And Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.